in today's video, we're gonna discuss what it costs to live on board this ship, the Sky Princess, for 21 days. So let's go. What is going on, YouTube? Greetings from the beautiful Sky Princess. I'm sitting here in the atrium area. I always call it the atrium area. I know that's not the correct name, but I always forget what it's called. And you guys yell at me and say, that's not the atrium. You tell me what it is, and then I forget. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go with atrium today, even though I know it's not the atrium, but there are lots of people down there getting coffee. I'm enjoying my butter pecan latte this morning. Normally it would be about five bucks because I always get a double shot of espresso. But since I got the coffee package, it's a little bit cheaper. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. You know, if you see my trusty old MacBook Pro out, that means we're gonna talk about the cost of cruising. I know it's something all of you are interested in. I get comments about it all the time. So today we're gonna to talk about what it costs me to cruise for 21 days on Sky Princess. So this cruise for me, price-wise, is broken into two sections. I paid for a seven-day cruise and then I paid for a 14-day cruise. Now that 14-day cruise actually was two seven-day cruises that you could have purchased separately, but it was more cost-effective to purchase it as one 14-day cruise. So that's what I did. That seven-day cruise on the beginning, I never had planned on doing that one, but uh, I was ready to go. I was ready to travel. I was ready to start this one-year cruise adventure. So I went ahead and booked that seven-day cruise. So 21 days, we're gonna talk about costs, okay? So before we dive into the numbers, I wanna show you exactly the biggest thing I paid for, which was my cabin. I booked an inside cabin here on Sky Princess. And so we're gonna go and take a look at the cabin real quick. So I really like Princess Cruises inside cabins. They're always really, really bright. They have these huge mirrors. It just makes it feel bigger and I don't feel claustrophobic in them. On the new ships, they have these USB ports uh, on the lamps, which is great. The beds, Princess is famous for its super comfy beds. I don't know how they do it, but this one uh, fit the bill and it was completely comfortable. I loved it. Got the TV over here. They don't have Friends or Seinfeld, but they do have Modern Family and Everybody Loves Raymond, so I was happy. Got a little refrigerator down here. You can put waters, Cokes, whatever you want to put in there. Over here, you have a hair dryer. Obviously, I don't need that, but maybe you would need it. Again, got the TV here. The TV does a lot of different things too. It's a smart TV. You can even gamble on that thing. All right, back here, Princess also does storage, right? Got these big closets. You can actually add a lower bar to it if you want. I did that. And over here, again, a lot of storage. And I'm about to open this door and show you even more storage. There's also a safe in here. That's where I keep my passport and any money I have. And I've never had an issue with that. And let's go check out the bathroom. All right, so your standard princess bathroom. I know everyone hates the shower curtain. Doesn't bother me. You'll see that in a minute. You've got, you know, a huge sink over here. You know, it's enough space, especially for one person. It's plenty of space. I think it would be plenty for two people as well. The only complaint I have in the bathroom is the weird spot they put the toilet paper. It's kind of hard to get to. <laughs> I think they could have found a better spot uh, to put that, but you know, whatever. And here's the shower. Shower's great. The water gets super, super hot and it lasts forever. You could take a hot shower for five hours and it'd still be scalding hot, which is the kind of showers I like. You always get shampoo and body wash and then hand wash and lotion. Okay, now that you've seen the cabin, let's talk about the destinations that we're gonna go to. So I mentioned this is a seven day cruise and a 14 day cruise. The seven day cruise is a Eastern Caribbean cruise and the 14 day cruise is a Western Caribbean cruise and then another Eastern Caribbean cruise. So we went to Cosmel twice, Roatan twice, Belize twice, Costa Maya twice, and those were the Eastern Caribbean cruises. And then on the Western Caribbean cruise, we were supposed to go to Princess K, which is in the Bahamas, but it got canceled due to, to high waves, so we weren't able to go to Princess K. So we had an extra sea day, which I love, so it didn't bother me any. And then we went to Amber Cove, Dominican Republic, Grand Turks, Turks and Caicos, and San Juan, Puerto Rico, which if you haven't watched my San Juan port visit video, you gotta go check it out. I ate this meal called Mofungo, which was amazing. Okay, now what you've been waiting for, let's get into the nitty gritty of the cost. 
So when I talk about cost of a cruise, when I give you a number, I'm including the cruise fare. I'm including the port fees, the taxes, and the gratuities. To me, those are all the fixed costs of cruising. Those are costs that you have to pay. And if you spend no more money, that's what your cruise would cost. So I'm gonna give you that number for this first seven day cruise. It was $775 for the cruise. I'll put up my receipt. You'll see that it was 600 and something, but that doesn't include gratuities. I paid gratuities separately. Now that cost included some onboard credit that I got. I got $125. How did I get that credit? Uh, I'm retired military, so they give me some onboard credit for that. And I also purchased a future cruise credit on my last Princess Cruise. And so I was able to get $25 uh, because I had that future cruise credit. And that $100 is deducted from the cost of your cruise when you book it, and they throw in some onboard credit. All right, so the 14-day cruise, what did that cost? So all total on that cruise, it was $1,514. And again, that includes cruise fare, taxes, port fees, and gratuities. You'll see the receipt here. It's under that price. That's because gratuities aren't included. Uh, but I did pay the gratuities before I got on board the ship. On this cruise, I received 450 onboard credit. I got $250 for being retired military. Uh, 14 days and above, they give you $250. It's a great benefit. But you can also get that same $250 benefit if you own 100 shares of uh, Carnival Cruise Line stock. You can get, it's very similar to the military credit that you get. And if you are military and you own the stock, you get double. So if I had owned the stock when I did this cruise, I would have got 500 onboard credit plus an extra 200. Now that $200 credit because um, you'll see it's 450. I mentioned I got 450 on board credit, 250 for being in the military. I got another 200 because they had a special promotion at the time. You book a cruise, you get $200 on board credit. So that's where that came from. There's always some kind of promotion like that. Currently, it's $100. So if you book a cruise right now, even if you have nothing else, you'll get that $100 on board credit. Okay, so total for 21 days, the cruise price, taxes, port fees, and gratuities was $2,289, which is about $109 a night. Don't forget, that included a total of $575 onboard credit. So if you subtract that, it's even less, but I won't do that. Let's just say all in cost, not factoring in the onboard credit, $109 a day. Okay, I know what you're gonna say, but what about the other costs, the hidden costs on a cruise that drives up the price of the cruise? So. This is all discretionary spending. You can just spend what I spent and you don't have to spend anything else and you'll have an amazing trip. You'll go to all kinds of great destinations. You will have room service every day. You'll get to eat great food on the ship in the dining rooms, in the buffet, in the specialty dining that is free like Alfredo's Pizza and the International Cafe, things like that. But some people like little extra things added onto their cruise. And so I'm gonna talk about what I added. On Princess, they have all these packages like Princess Premier and all this stuff, and they just bundle everything together. But the primary cost saver in those kind of packages is alcohol, and I don't really drink that much alcohol. I did have a couple of drinks on this cruise, but not enough to justify getting something with an alcohol package. So I don't normally get those add-on packages. They might make financial sense for you, but they just don't make a lot of financial sense for me. I know that's going to be a question people ask me is about uh, the alcoholic beverages, because that's what a lot of people like to do on the cruise ship. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna tell you what I spent. So let's talk about that. So the first item, the most expensive item for me was internet. For 21 days, the internet cost me $314. So about $14, $15 a day. That's pretty pricey. I only got the one device internet. It's easy enough to switch you know, when I'm using my computer, when I'm using my phone to switch devices for that. The second big expense for me, if you've been watching my channel, it will be no surprise, is Fufu Coffee. So every morning I get up and I have myself mm. a butter pecan latte or a cookie dough latte or something like that. And those are a little bit more expensive on here. They're three to $5, depending on what you add to them. So about the price of a Starbucks, but you can buy packages that cut that cost down to about $2 a drink. So that's what I do. So I bought 
two coffee packages on here because I was on 21 days. Each coffee package gets me 15 specialty drinks. They were $32 a piece, so $64 total for 21 days of Fufu coffee. So for me, that's a bargain. For you, might not make sense. If you drink regular coffee, you can get an unlimited amount of black coffee and add sugar and cream to it uh, anywhere on the ship, and it's free. Okay, so I did drink four alcoholic beverages on board and two Diet Cokes. If you're watching my live stream, you saw me drink those two Diet Cokes. I normally don't drink that on here. I just drink the tea and the lemonade. So drinks are, usually, are pretty affordable for me. So total for those two Diet Cokes, which were a little bit over a dollar a piece, and the four drinks I had, which ranged in price from $6 to $10, beers around $6, uh, cocktails $8 to $10, actually $7 to $10. I had four of those on the entire cruise, so my total cost was $35 for those kind of specialty drinks. Uh, you're seeing now that a alcohol package wouldn't make a lot of sense for me. <laughs> Lastly, I did four excursions. So excursions are tours that you pay for. I did two snorkeling and two food and walking type city tours. The total cost for all four of those was $185. Usually the city walking tours are somewhere between $30 and $60. The snorkeling, $50 to $80, depending on how long it is. Pretty affordable. If you wanted to just walk off the ship and snorkel, you could probably do that. It'd be a little bit more challenging, so I just took the tours. In Grand Turks, though, Grand Turks, you just walk off the ship and you'll have amazing snorkeling. The water's crystal clear blue. You can rent snorkeling gear there for like five, ten dollars So all of these extra expenses I had were $606 total. But if you remember, I have $575 on board credit. And that stuff can be applied to all those things I just talked about. So take $606 minus $575 and you have $31. So I got all of that extra stuff, internet, all that stuff for $31 after, my, after you deducted the onboard credit. So that's about $1.50 a day. So this cruise cost me about $110.50 a day. I do want to say one thing about the internet. So I'm moving up the ranks on Princess Cruise. You actually move up pretty fast as a solo cruiser. I'll actually be the highest rank. I say rank because I was in the military. I'll be the highest status for Princess after my cruise in April. And that'll be great. But after this cruise, I actually move up to platinum status, which is the second highest status. And one of the benefits you get is 50% off internet. So that $300 internet cost would have been about $150. So about you know $7 a day. So it would have been much cheaper. And I'm excited to get to platinum because that means my next cruise, which will be on Caribbean Princess, I will get 50% off on internet. And I'm on that ship for a month. So that'll be a huge cost saver for me. And uh, you know, that's another way to cut costs. After you get some loyalty status, it'll bring the cost down. And that would have been an extra $150 onboard credit I would have had to spend on whatever I wanted. More drinks, more coffee, more specialty dining, that kind of stuff. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up. And if you're interested in traveling cruise content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you everybody for watching. See you next video.